Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for having us here in, uh, in Columbus. Uh, we're going to have an exciting uh, set of panels, uh, squeezed on time a bit, but a lot of like amazing people on the panels. Um, uh, I'm here from Dubai. I'm with a, a family in Abu Dhabi. I'm going to start with a quick message that impact is everywhere, uh, from ambitious stuff to small day-to-day -day things. Uh, for example, we as a family are supporting a space company that uh, is democratizing space for small countries so they have access to space. You don't uh, have to be like a large company, for example, to a country to have a space program. Um, but at the same time, uh, there are little things like uh, the cups we've been drinking with every day. Uh, this is something we're not invested in, but I saw a waffle cup uh, that you could have coffee in. It lasts for 12 hours. Um, and then you could eat the cup after you finish drinking coffee. So uh, we could have impact from the small things to the, to the large things uh, in our lives. Uh, it doesn't have to just be space, but you could also do space. Um, so I'm going to go now uh, to our panel. Um, uh, Kim is hopefully joining via Zoom. She, uh, uh, she's not online yet. Maybe she'll speak later. Um, I'll introduce her then, but uh, she has an amazing portfolio. She's invested in stuff that uh, Bill Gates' uh, Breakthrough uh, Fund has invested in. Uh, I, I have uh, great admiration for her work. Um, we have Steve here. Uh, his company is Blockable. They're um, a prefab develop construction and development uh, developer. Uh, he'll talk about it more. And then Evan uh, helps uh, families uh, set up foundations and trusts in a unique way that will tell us about as well. Um, so let's start with Steve. Uh, Steve, can you tell us about what your company does? How is it impactful? Uh, and you can take my microphone. I think this works. So I can go. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Chun. I'm the Chief Development Officer at Blockable. Uh, Blockable is the world's first vertically integrated modular real estate developer. Uh, we have developed a proprietary building system that we use to build our own real estate projects, specializing in multifamily. Our company is an example of the application of impact capital. And we have a very ambitious goal, basically, to help solve the housing crisis in America, and eventually, hopefully, worldwide. Basically, uh, as most of you know, there is a tremendous housing shortage in America, millions of residential units that this country needs to meet the needs of, of Americans. Uh, the problem is that the supply is, coming, is falling far short of meeting that demand, and it's growing worse every year. So what we're doing is trying to solve that because right now it's not just a quantitative issue where the numbers are falling short, it's also a qualitative issue. So everything that you see being built today, virtually every new construction project for apartments, for housing, is being built for the top of the market, especially in rental units, because the cost of construction is so high that the only way to get a deal to pencil and to get people to invest or lend money for your projects is to build for the top of the market charge the highest rents possible, and then you get the returns that are necessary. That's because the cost of construction keeps escalating year over year. The cost of materials, the cost of labor, everything about it right now, it's a broken system. Blockable, because we're doing modular prefabricated units, but we have a very versatile, flexible system, we're able to build cheaper and faster than traditional build. Therefore, we can build projects that nobody else can because we can make our deals pencil when traditional builders are only building for the top of the market. So we'll be able to meet the demands of not just the Class A renter, but the Class B, Class C, as well as, well as affordable housing. Workforce housing, what I call attainable housing, is the real need in America. It's not the top of the market. It's the middle of the market. It's the working class and the middle class of America whose housing needs are not being met. The other aspect of this from, a, from an impact perspective is in terms of the climate crisis. The construction industry is one of the worst culprits in the world in terms of its impact on the environment. There have been many studies in the industry that show that the construction sector is responsible for 
40% of all the world's consumption of energy, 50% of all landfill waste, and 39% of all greenhouse gas emissions. It's a major problem. With our system, because it's being built in the factory and because of our design, as well as our digital systems, we have partnered with the National Renewable Energy Lab who completed a peer-reviewed study whose results are about to come out. They concluded that when we're at full-scale production, the Black Bull system will be reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 66%, construction waste by 91%, and vehicle miles traveled by 67%. So it's a major impact on the environmental front as well. So we have a very ambitious goal with our company, but we can make an impact across many different sectors and hopefully make a true difference. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Steve. Um, uh, next up, we have Evan. Um, can you tell us about um, your unique approach to you know, trusts and foundations? We have some families in the room. Maybe they'll appreciate your advice. Of course. Um, first of all, my name is Evan Turk. I'm an attorney. I'm admitted to practice in Jersey and Florida. I also am the president of Palm Beach Strategies in Palm Beach, Florida. And what we do is we work with various family offices and investors to find better tax strategies, better ways to get into private equity or into various investments versus your typical approach. And one of the things that we are able to do successfully is to truly understand what our clients' needs are, eliminate the unnecessary burden or risk that they are typically uh, taking when it comes to investing, uh, try to help them from creating strategies that are sound rather than um, they're going to be challenged in this upcoming, uh, in this administration right now. So we're taking a very proactive approach to handling our clients' money. We work with various family offices, and uh, we have a network of over 9,000 CPAs. And what we do on each and every deal is we vet the strategy with the client's need. We do a lot of work with charity, especially now with clients who have significant capital gains and are trying to figure out ways to increase their family wealth without having to be in a position where half of it is going to the government in a form of a tax. We do this through unique strategies. A lot of what we do is just basic trusts, but we tweak it a little bit. We have three of the best uh, law firms out there in the nation that work side by side with us. So everything that we are doing is also vetted by a large legal firms with uh, infrastructure. At the end of the day, what we're able to do differently is produce exceptional value to our clients, uh, reduce the risk while reducing their tax liability exponentially. And uh, we have a Delaware statutory trust, a 1031 fund, so we can do it on a traditional platform. We could also do it on a um, you know, 1031 exchange. What we uh, noticed in that world is that yield is not nearly the same when it is under a 1031. And we found ways to make the yield significantly higher without increasing risk whatsoever. And our clients are really appreciating the fact that they have options now. We have strategies for clients who are looking for income. Whether it's monthly, we invest in a lot in self-storage units throughout the country. We have relationships with self-storage companies, which vets these projects, and they'll actually buy these projects out if we need liquidation. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, uh, Evan. I think Kim has uh, joined us online. Um, can you hear us, Kim? Um, hi, awesome. So we still have a few minutes of the panel. Um, I briefly introduced you previously. Um, what's like your, um, you know, current favorite project or impact insight you'd like to share from your vast experiences and, uh, you know, uh, diverse uh, investments? 
Thank you. Well, there's so many, it's hard to choose just one. But since you and I were talking a little bit earlier about real estate tech, um, and I do have my lead certification in new construction that I've had for quite some time, and I've gotten to see the iteration on building technologies, not only for operations and systems management to be more efficient, but also in the construction materials themselves. And I think the material science as it comes to construction is, is an area that's really exciting. Um, one of our portfolio companies is taking uh, fly ash, um, capturing the CO2 and other emissions and converting it into um, upcycling concrete in conjunction with kind of tearing down old co concrete and then reusing it on site to really minimize uh, minimize the CO2 emissions and carbon footprint, as well as kind of capturing from the most polluting factories the their emissions. Um, they've, they've done one wing of the, the, the newest wing of the San Francisco International Airport. This company is called Blue Planet LTD. Um, they have a couple of competitors in the space that we also looked at, um, and we felt that their technology was superior. We also um, are excited by the fact that this company has um, a number of highly reflective paints. And I'm not sure if any of you recently saw the article that came out in the last day or two about the, the whitest paint um, with the highest reflectivity of heat just recently coming out. And what's exciting about that is simply by repainting a lot of the existing buildings and infrastructure, you reduce the heat island effect, which is the, the heat that kind of accumulates on, on the on the ground, which is great, particularly for lower income communities where they don't have too much vegetation, but also in terms of very affordably um, as buildings naturally re repaint, um, use less of the energy requirements for HVAC system, heating air con uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. And that's the largest use that these, these buildings currently have for their, um, for their electricity consumption. Um, so so those are, that's just one example of, you know, really so many that, and I know we don't have much time. So ho hopefully I'll see you a little bit later today, all of you. Okay, thank you for sharing, Kim, really insightful. Uh, about different technologies that apply to you know real estate and construction. Uh, drive safe and uh, we'll see you soon. Come join our 361 firm community of investors and thought leaders. We have a lot of events created by the community as we collaborate on investments and philanthropic interests. Join us.